What if you'd never seen the ocean or the sky or were facing some type of physical disability? Well, today on Discovery Jones Expeditions, we are diving deep right here at Dive Paradise in Cozumel. Today, I am in Cozumel, Mexico, one of the most famous destinations in all the world for the sport of scuba diving. Now, when you're in Cozumel, you want to get together with a dive shop called Dive Paradise. They provide great scuba diving all around the island of Cozumel. Today's a special day. We're going to meet Jim Elliott and his friends at Dive Heart, an organization that helps people with special needs enjoy the sport of scuba diving. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. Jim, hey, how's it going? Very good, how are you? I am excellent, I'm excited. Today's a big day. I want you to meet Jim Elliott. He is the founder of an organization called Dive Heart. You gotta tell us more about this. Well, Dive Heart is a nonprofit, totally volunteer organization in Discovery whose mission is to build confidence and independence in the lives of children and adults with disabilities through scuba diving. Now, disabilities in general, I mean, there's a lot of challenges that people of all ages face out there on land. But now the water, what a whole new world in the ocean where everybody's kind of on the same playground. Absolutely, we're all equal under the water. And the nice thing about scuba as a tool is it helps create a paradigm shift in their life, which lets them focus on what they can do instead of what they can't do. Well, I've heard great things, and you are changing lives through this organization, so I say we uh, get on the boat and do some diving. You ready? Let's go. Grab the gear. Let's do it. Well, I'm here with Dan Barrett. He's one of the scuba divers here with Dive Heart this week. Dan, how's it going? Great, Discovery. Great. Well, this is really exciting, Dan. Now, you are in here enjoying the scuba diving, but uh, let's tell everybody, of course, you're blind. Yes, yeah, I'm legally blind. Now, what do you tell people out there, especially young people, that say, well, I, Dan, that looks really neat, but, uh, you know, I'm blind, too, and I, I, I don't know how I could get something out of this. What, what do you tell them they would get out of dive, scuba diving? Today, we were drifting along on a current and it was, and it was like, it was like you were flying. So everyone can enjoy flying underwater, and you don't need eyesight to do it. If you face a challenge, you'll be amazed. Start facing, start facing a different challenge every day, and you'll be amazed sooner or later. There won't be anything you won't try. If you face the challenge, and when you do it, you're going to have such a sense of accomplishment, like I did, that just transferred into all parts of my life. I never felt my spirit never felt so high as when I go. 100 feet underwater. The Dive Heart is a great organization. Tell us a little bit more about your involvement with the group. Well, my involvement with the group started out, I, as a, you know, I grew, up, I grew up legally blind, and when I heard about Dive Heart and heard about the work they do, I just said I have to be a part of this because for the first time, I realized this is something I want to give, I want to give back to other, to other people. I know what it's like to be told all my life what you can't do. All my life I've been told the things I can't do. You can't do this, you can't do that because you can't see. You can't play baseball, you can't play basketball, you can't play soccer, you name it. There's all these things you can't do. Now all of a sudden, there's some, the people from Dive Heart came along and said, guess what, here's something you can do. And when they told, and the minute they told me there was something I could do, you'd be amazed at all the other things I found out I could do as well. What are we looking at now? What's going on, Jim? This is the uh, this is the blind scenario we do with our disabled dive training. Um, right now, Alan is a blacked out mask. And now, Alan can see, right? He's not blind for real. Right. This is just so that he gets empathy training. Uh, Todd is his primary instructor, and what he's doing now is guiding him down to the water's edge, where uh, he'll be accompanied by Val over there, who will then be in the water, and uh, we'll get his gear on, get him in the water, and then take him down for a dive. Now, let me interrupt you real quick. How did you arrange for him to, to appear blind or feel blind? What, what's in his mask? 
what we've done is we've just taken a, a little piece of a garbage bag, a black garbage bag works great. Uh, we used to use duct tape, but that didn't work very well. It, came, it was hard to get off the mask, but the, uh, it worked great. It's, he's a total, he's totally blind at this point and uh, depends completely upon Todd to know where he's going and what he's doing. There's a lot of trust involved here. And this is one of the things that really helps the buddies and the instructors when they go through this training is it's all about trust and, uh, and, and understanding where the visually impaired person is coming from. What is your background, your experience with working with the blind? Well, my daughter's blind from birth. Um, when she got to be nine, they mainstreamed her with sighted kids and she could see, she was a partial. She could read a two inch letter, a half an inch from her face. And they teased her on the playground and basically she said, Dad, I can read, you know, I'm like everybody else. So she threw down her cane and refused to learn Braille. And I desperately needed her to get her involved in something and got her involved in downhill skiing, which really turned her life around and inspired me to start Dive Park. So Jim, we've got some training going on back here. Tell me what we're seeing. Well, what's going on now is uh, some Dive Park disabled training. Alan is becoming a buddy and is learning to uh, understand what it's like to be a paraplegic. Todd's uh, his primary buddy is going to stay with him in the water. And then when this is completed, Alan should have a sense of what it's like to be a paraplegic. So when he guides a paraplegic, he'll have a, a better idea. Well, obviously, I'm guessing that in the water, so much more dependence is on your upper body. It has to be. Absolutely. He uses his arms to fin instead of his legs. Scuba diving yeah, is a very safe sport. It's a very comfortable sport. And it's a wonderful way to go to a world where we are visitors. Dive hard takes it one more notch. The water is a very friendly place uh, from a physical point of view. Uh, and it can tolerate a lot of, uh, uh, of disability. The kids I work with, I work with kids who are 400 pounds, 500 pounds. They're very strong. Many of you have been lift, weightlifters. Try lifting up 400 pounds. We'll try to walk down the block carrying that 400 pounds. That's what they do. But they have no cardiovascular reserve. And if that 400 pounds gets going the wrong direction, they're going over. Etc. Yeah. So, in a sense, they're physically handicapped, but on the other hand, their brains are working good. And the, the biggest thing I think Dive Art's going to bring to my kids is an opportunity. Because these kids are terribly discriminated against. They've had a life of failure. They've been laughed at, they've been teased, they can't go on the ride at the amusement park, they can't go shopping with their girlfriends because nothing in the store is going to fit them. Uh, and here's something they can do. My name is Bill Bogdan. This is my wife, Laura Bogdan. Uh, we've been married for going, going to be nine years uh, in a couple of days. Uh, this is our first scuba diving trip with Dive Heart Foundation, so we kind of call it our second honeymoon, so to speak. Uh, but I've been in a, a wheelchair all my life. Um, I was diagnosed with cancer of the spine when I was eight months of age. And because of the cancer and so forth, I was left an incomplete paraplegic. I'm 37 years old, happily married, got a three-year-old at home by the grace of God, and uh, we're out here enjoying the beautiful weather of Cozumel, get some sunburn. Bill, tell me about what it's like underwater uh, when you're down there and this is a whole new world for you. Explain a little bit what it feels like under the well, Probably the easiest thing I can explain when you're underwater, you dive in the minute you hit your face, plants right into that ocean water there, you're leaving your wheelchair behind. And it's a place where, you know, our world is, is, uh, has different degrees of accessibility and as a person with a disability you always run into things that are inaccessible but when you're out in the water and you're under the water you've got total accessibility to go to things and I leave my wheelchair behind I actually leave it on the shore and uh, and all of that so it's, it's really really cool feeling uh, to be out there and just uh, drifting along with the current checking out all the fish and the great uh, underwater life that's out there and even you get a chance to even see a shark every now and then so that's even cool well, the first thing I, I always tell people when I uh, talk to other people with disabilities is don't let your disability stop you. God gave everyone special talents and special gifts, and it's up to you to turn around and use the gifts that you have to the best of your ability. And if you turn around and you let disability stop you or get in the way, you're never going to be able to accomplish anything. And by coming out here with the Dive Out Foundation and scuba diving, it really shows that, uh, you know, with all, all disabilities, there are all there's endless possibilities that you can turn around and have. And scuba diving is just one of the greatest sports uh, that I recommend for anybody with a disability to try. Well, you are fresh up from your dive, Dave. How was it? It was a wonderful dive. Great dive buddies. We had a great time. We've seen eels, flounders, sea snakes, all kinds and a of ton of fish. Stuff. Now, what, what does it mean to you to be out here and, and be helping people, be assisting these folks who sometimes wouldn't have this opportunity? Well, it makes it good for everybody. Everybody could be equal in the water. Myself, I'm equal in the water. It makes it so much different. They could even put a uh, disabled 
the blind divers. I had Dan with me this morning. It's just a great experience. It really is a wonderful it sport. It's a lot of fun. It is. It's so equalizing and everything. And the water, I mean, the water's cool. It's so the hot water. out here, too. It oh, feels great, huh? Hot, hot. I think we should get back in. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it again. How do you encourage other people that come to you and they say, you know what, I am also in a wheelchair or I'm facing some situations that make it difficult for me to do this, but you're inspiring me. How do I get over my fear? I mean, I mean I'm in a wheelchair, um, but you just got to get out there and do stuff. You got to live life. You got to go out. Sometimes you got to take some chances and, and uh, go out and experience stuff on your own. And, um, you know, your experiences hopefully will encourage other people to go out and do stuff and not just kind of sit around and, and uh, you know, dwell on, on what you can't do. Instead, go out there and do what you what you can do. Well, the stories you're bringing home from these types of trips, experiences, scuba diving, you get to share that with people. You're definitely doing that definitely. for them. Yeah, I mean, even even the trips that we went on, uh, we went on a trip in the Bahamas, went shark diving, brought back some videos and pictures of that, and you know, people that that are able-bodied, you know, look at that and be like, man, I can't even do that. I wouldn't even do that. So, <laughs> I mean, those type of things, you know. It, it helps uh, kind of push the envelope and say, man, these, these you know, people in wheelchairs, they can go out and do stuff. They're doing things that I wouldn't even do. I'm legally blind, and so it's nice. I, you know, didn't think I'd ever be able to scuba dive because I didn't think I'd really be able to see or know what I was looking for. And so it's nice diving with Jim, and he's able to show me and have me feel things while I'm in the water. So is this your first diving experience out in the ocean? Yes, it is. Tell me what it, been, what it was like for you to first get in the ocean and experience it. I was a little bit nervous, um, but um, you know, after a while, you know, I, I was more relaxed and I just couldn't believe how beautiful it was down there with the reefs and the plants and all the fish. Now, Jim, someone who does deal with a visual impairment, how do you help them understand what is underwater and see it and understand it by feel and touch, or how do you do that? Well, usually we don't encourage people to touch anything under the water, obviously. But there is a book out, Touch the Sea, that we, we review before we go down. And uh, that way there are certain things that are safe to touch where it won't hurt the animal or, or I mean, touch the, hurt the plant, um, and it won't hurt you. Hey, Jim. Hey, Discovery. Well, I owe you a big thank you. I mean, I had a great time, and I've, I've never realized how many things are available to people underwater, people that face disabilities or challenges like that, and, and you're doing a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. Scuba diving is just a tool. We use it to change people's lives, help them focus on what they can do instead of what they can't do. And people that are visually impaired or maybe paraplegics or whatever the situation may be, you know, they probably are told a lot. They can't do something. They can't scuba dive, whatever it might be. You're opening the door. I mean, wide open. Absolutely. Whether somebody wants to become a buddy or they have a disability or know somebody with a disability, they can go right to diveheart.org and find us and we'll help them out. A lot of great information available on the website. Be sure to check it out. Uh, I know you got a lot of students waiting for you out here in the water. I've got things to do, so I just had to say thanks again and we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks. All right. Take it easy.